In today's episode of The Resale Zone, we break down how you can make a really strong first listing on eBay. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Let's get right into it. Hey everybody, Jeff here with Resale Heroes and I'm here with Common Lad. Hey guys, I'm Common Lad. I'm a part-time reseller with my buddy Erval. And I am a full-time reseller with my business partner, Jeremy. So today, episode three of the eBay Resale Zone, we're going to be talking about the listing process, how you can list faster like just really the basics though so we're going to keep it simple and like how to do your first listing or your first few listings and we're also going to answer another question so this is a question we got from uh, our viewers and this other question is also some uh, someone asked us this question is should i get an ebay store or not is it worth it and we're going to be touching on that so perfect yeah super excited for today's episode i think there's a lot of value that we're going to add here and uh, I think we should just get right into it and sort of break down how the listing process goes. Uh, we discussed in the last few episodes uh, or videos, I should say, um, was one of the things was how to source your items. And the other one was how to start when you really had nothing. So let's assume now that you've gotten those items along this journey and now you're ready to go and list them on the platform. That's sort of what we're going to be looking into here today. We're going to begin off, I believe, with the listing process. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about your first... We're, we're, we're going to talk as if this is your first ever listing, right? So what are the steps? So big picture, pictures, <laughs> that's the first step. So you, you got your item, uh, you, you, you got to take pictures of it. You then have to make a title for it. You need to write a description for it. You need to price it and then you need to submit it. And then you need to wait for it to sell. So let's talk about the pictures. So pictures... The way to, 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 for your first, oh, there's so much I want to say for the first listing, I would recommend you just take pictures for the one thing. Probably you have 10 things you want to list. Just do one at a time until you're really comfortable with the process. But when you're more comfortable with the process, you can take all your pictures all at the same time. And then it kind of helps save you time in the future. And then you can just kind of chain a few listings one after another. But for your first listing, taking pictures. So I don't know why. Well, actually, I think I do know why. But so <laughs> it's said that, and it's generally accepted that eBay recommends that in your pictures, it's a white background. It's as simple as possible. They also say that you're not supposed to have watermarks like floating text on it, that you're not really supposed to have too much going on there. And I think the I think I read the reason there is that they they kind they're kind of building a catalog of things as you're listing things, and it kind of helps in their algorithm for things to be standard and uniform and whatever. So you want your your pictures to be attractive because these pictures is what people are going to look at. So you got two ways to attract people's attention: your title and your picture. But it's your picture that they're going to see first. And the pictures are very small on eBay. So if you can kind of zoom into your item and crop out all, all the white around it, uh, and it's important to have decent lighting, right? And you don't want it to be too bright. You don't want it to be too dark. You want pictures of different angles of your item. You want to absolutely show if there's damage to the item. And you want to show the good parts of the item as well. I agree. And I completely agree with everything that JF's saying there. I think getting all the angles and all that stuff is super important. The one thing that I'll note is what I noticed with a lot of new uh, beginner resellers is that they're going to put off starting this whole thing because of pictures, because they think they have to have like this perfect setup and this perfect world where they've got all these fancy lights and they've got this backdrop that rolls out and all this stuff. And what I always say to that is you need to just start. And one way to do that is to head over to your bedroom floor or to your <laughs> dining room table or whatever it might be and take the pictures. Now, does eBay want us to have a white background? Is it nice to have the white background? Is it uniform? Do we both use, you know, white backgrounds or whatever, something uniform? Of course. And you can build that in as you get, you know, move along. But I'm saying when you're just starting out, all you have to do is figure out how to take your pictures. And exactly what you said, you want to get every single angle of the item. You want to get a model number or a close up of whatever that might be on whatever item you're selling, as well as any imperfections or defects. And then that will make for a really good picture, even if it's not necessarily lighted perfectly or if it's not on a white background or on a perfect set. Yeah. And uh, the when for the longest time, we had just two big pieces of white cardboard 
just kind of sandwiched like that. And honestly, I think that's what most eBay sellers use. Like it doesn't need to be mm -hmm. complicated. You can probably get this for free half the time. Yeah. But if you don't have it, don't let that stop you from, you know, like we still have old pictures in our listings from this floor right here, but just start, just start and start, take, take, take pictures of what you got. And so I can throw a couple ideas out there too for anybody that wants to take it a step further and they're just starting out and they're on a low budget or whatever it might be. One of the things I've done in the past is obviously, you know, the dollar store and the cardboard, or you can get one of those pieces of uh, paper that you might do a project on and you can get a couple of those and tape them on the back and create a nice white background with some of those. Another thing that people uh, often I don't think think about is if you have an extra set of white bed sheets, you can actually lay them out on a table or something of that nature. And you can take pictures on those sheets. And I've done that when I had started way back when, and you can still find pictures with that. So there's a couple different options for sure. And I'm sure you guys could be creative and think of a few more of some white services. If you don't already have one that you could take advantage of for your first few pictures, but again, not super critical, but we'll definitely help you with the SEO and help you uh, with eBay. And, you know, it's good to be on their side if they're saying that they want something done a certain way, but it's not a must for your first few listings. Yeah. And, and it's like you say, you can grow into it. And just start with where you are with what you have, like we keep saying. And, uh, I, and I will say this, the more pictures you have, the better, even if it's just a slightly different angle. Like, for example, today I was listing music CDs that only had the CD. There was no case. There was no art. So, I mean, there's only so many angles of the same thing that you can take. But even just taking like more to the left or more zoomed in or taking under the CD or whatever. Um, the eBay likes you to have multiple pictures. It, it, it's good for the algorithm. And again, I'm, we're not going to go into too much detail there, but the more pictures, the better. Now, when you're starting out, you only have a few items. Don't worry about how much time it takes you to get your first listing done. Just get it done, learn. And after you've got a hundred listings, under your belt, then you can start optimizing your process. And I'm going to say this next thing I'm going to say is I don't always take eight pictures now. So when I'm listing low value stuff, like stuff under $10, I try to take two, three pictures, but sometimes like for those CDs, sometimes I only take one, but that's so that I can do a lot, a lot, a lot of listings. Like I'm listing in bulk, but that's not something that you would be doing when you first start. Hmm. And uh, so so it's kind of the toss up of should I take eight pictures and take twice as much time or should I take two, three pictures and kind of list twice as fast. But again, when you're first, that's more of an advanced tip if you want to save a little time, but it does help when you have more pictures. And I want to touch on a couple of things that you said there, because I think when people are starting out, they're always in a rush and nobody oh. takes enough time to really learn about the platform that they're going into. Your first listing should be more like a class to you. It should be a teaching opportunity than, a, yeah. than objectively trying to sell something. Your goal should be to go into the platform, read every single option that they have to offer and figure out how you might be able to take advantage of those options and also get yourself familiarized well with the platform so you can start to do your other listings to a level where it's acceptable on the platform. Because I see a lot of beginners with their one photo of a pair of shoes. It's dark, it's lit, you know, it's like on the angle, you can't see anything. It just says, you know, uh, Nike shoe in the title and the description <laughs> is full of nothing. So yeah. there's a lot of, you know, if you can just beat those people and spend a little more time to figure out the platform. And again, don't worry about all this stuff that we talk about when it comes down to how fast can we list this and how do we do this? Don't worry about that when you're starting out. It's a learning opportunity and you have to think of it like that. And there's a lot of cool features that you'll find. You'll find the remove background feature and a couple other things that maybe you shouldn't be playing with right off the bat, but there's, there's cool things to learn in that sense. So I think Take your time when you're starting out. And I was going to say something else regarding another point that you have, but I can't recall now what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm just so interesting. I, I know. I'm inspiring. I'm inspiring. All it's the just, it, it's gone past me anyway. Videos. Yeah. So we, anyway, we were talking about the, uh, the pictures there. And I, I think that's a really important aspect of them there is, is to just take your time and not worry about too much. Oh, I know what I was going to say now. With regards to how many pictures you're taking, Again, with what you said, um, this is something that eBay likes to see a lot. And it's actually, I think, been proven by a few different people who have done some research into it. And eBay may have even mentioned it themselves, that they like seeing listings with more pictures. So generally speaking, the more pictures that you have, the higher you're going to rank in the search. And without getting too in-depth with it, all we can recommend when you're starting out is if you have the time, which you will have, because you're going to trade your time for money as you build up. Right now, you've got time. You can take those few extra pictures to outrank some of us bigger sellers or maybe 
we're trying to list 200 items in, you know, a day and we don't have time to take six pictures. When I'm taking pictures of a video game, I know I'm taking the front and the inside. I'm not even taking the back or the spine or any of that stuff that might land in the description or whatever, but it's all about the speed and efficiency. Whereas for you, it should just be about learning the platform and getting those first few items up as best as you can. Yeah, for sure. So now, so after you take the pictures, we're not going to go into too much detail about how to get the pictures from your phone to your computer or whatever. But I will say, you don't need to have a super advanced camera to do this. Just use whatever camera you've got on your phone. Or if you have an old dinky camera, use that. Like, <laughs> use what you have. Start cheap. Like, nowadays, anyone who has a cell phone has a strong camera in there. And everybody should know how to plug a cable from your phone to your computer to get the pictures there. And so the way that I do it though, I have my account connected to Dropbox, which is an online cloud service. And then every time I take a picture, it gets automatically uploaded there. And then when I come to my computer, by the time I'm, I'm over here, they're all uploaded and I can just, so for me, that's how I do it. But it, when you only have a few items to list, it doesn't really matter. Like the, yeah. those savings on time is not enough when it's only a few listings. But in the future, this is stuff that you can think about. For sure. And I think, you know, listen, there's no right right or wrong way to do it. Like you're right. saying, you can email them to yourself, text them to yourself, whatever the case. Another thing though, and this is so underrated, the eBay app. When you're starting out, open up the eBay app, take your pictures on there, scroll right down to the bottom, save as draft, head over to your computer. There's a lot of beginners that do that. There's even a lot of advanced eBayers that will do that. I still do it for some of the things I'm listing. If it's a big bulky item and my, my little camera, because I use a camera with an SD card, which of course you can just plug into a computer and get your pictures, but that doesn't always work. So I, I get my phone out. I do a just open up a new draft on eBay. I go list an item. I go and take some pictures, save as a draft, go on my computer and do the rest there. Actually, th this brings up an interesting point that came up when I was on a stream a few weeks ago. I list everything on the computer. Hmm. A lot of people use the app. I, I don't. It's crazy. But some people are faster going like this than typing. And so it really, it goes back to what you're saying. There's no right or wrong. Use what you have. Just do what you're more comfortable with. And then you can figure out how to be faster in the future. But whether you do it on the app or you do it on the computer or you do whatever. Do whatever what you're comfortable you. with. If yeah, you don't exactly. have a computer and you're not using one, you just want to go on there and play around your phone for a little bit, you can. I'll say that you can't access as many features as you can on your phone as you right. can at the computer. But for some people, that's a good thing, right? If you're just starting out and you don't want to be overly confused or complicated, you might just want to stick with your phone. However, I would actually say that you do need to know what you're doing more on the phone because you know, you're limited to how many options you have. So you really need to know what those are, whereas the computer might be easier to sort of figure that stuff out and find more tutorials on it. Yeah. Regardless, that's that's the photo side of things. Yeah, I think the next sort of more important thing or most important, not most important, because the photos, like you say, are the first thing that people will look at. But when it comes to the SEO and, and the search results and all these things, another really important thing, the photo gets you clicks to your listing. The title gets you to show up in the search result. And I think that's what we start need to move on to next year, because I think there's a lot of cool things that we can talk about in the title. I'm curious to know how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you should be copying the titles that we're making, but so uh, the title would arguably be as important as the picture for different reasons like you said. And um, you, you only have so much space. So, and also if you have too many words in there, it can kind of mess up your ranking in, in the search. So write out the title of what it is that you're selling, right? I know that sounds obvious, but I, I, I wish I had one of the CDs here, but I'll use one as an example. So if I'm selling, uh, let's say I'm selling this pen, all right? This is a pen. This has the Blue Cross logo on it. And so I would title this, and it's a really nice pen. This is like some of the nicest pens ever. <laughs> uh, I love these pens. They're nice, they're like chrome. They've got a nice blue thing. So I would say something like Blue Cross branded promotional pen, blue ink. That's all you really <laughs> you need. Go. Like it, yeah. it doesn't have to be complicated, but I mean, that, that might not be the best example, but just write out what it is and you can start there. 
Like yeah. you don't have to g- make it too complicated. Um, and then assuming you're selling just one of it, you can put one of it. If you're selling multiples of it, you can put like, if, if I'd be selling four pens, I could do four X this, or I could do a l- lot of this many pens, but like, you don't have to, you know, it's not rocket science. It's not, um, j- just write out what it is and what the, f- what some of the features are. So if you're selling like a PlayStation three console, you could write Sony PlayStation three black console. You could write how many, how big the hard drive is and what the model number is. And then if there's room at the end, you can, you could do something like console only or no cords or with a controller or whatever, whatever. So, Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's no right or wrong, like, well, of course there's better ways to do it, but you just experiment with it. And, and we've evolved over time using different words, but it doesn't mean that you want to copy what everyone else is doing. Like you need it to be a little different, but it does give you an idea. So, so why don't you start by searching in the eBay search what it is you're trying to sell and then see what kind of keywords are out there and what makes sense for your item to plug into your title. I was going to say that, Jeff. This is another learning experience where you can actually go onto the app, go onto your computer and dive into what other people are doing and take a learning, take your notes or whatever, take a learn from it is what I'm trying to say. And I think that's a really valuable um, way to start sort of figuring things out. But to some extent, I think we can both kind of agree. Sometimes titles are just sort of made up on the spot, right? It's just sort of whatever you see in front of you and you're just describing it, especially for items that you're less familiar with. Uh, In my store, uh, personally, I like to come up with a more uniform approach to things. I'm trying to eliminate as much thinking as possible. That way I can spend more time working and less time thinking about what to do. So in the case of a video game, I might have a, a pre-formatted kind of thing where it's like, okay, I put the game name down first, then I put the console that it's for, then I put the condition that it's in or if it's tested or whatever. Um, you know, I was talking about on a, on a short that I did the other day about how I was listing a bunch of Lego when I was putting the set number in, the name of the set, the actual uh, number, did I say the set number? The set name, the brand of the set and the set number. And I would say, you know, new in box, whatever. But again, it's kind of about making it up as you go. I know I've got a bunch of formats kind of laid out, but I think the best way is to sort of learn from other people. You can either even take a look at our stores, right? And figure out what we're doing and not necessarily copy them, but take, you know, notes and take things from each one to try to develop the best fitting title for the item that you're selling. Yeah, and and um, remember that, people reading your titles are not robots and they're not search engines. So yeah, to some degree, you need to squeeze information in there in a short space, but you also want it to be legible. It has to make sense. It has to be, well, I don't know. You want it to make sense. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like a sentence, but it has, well, definitely you don't want it to be a sentence, (laughs) but, but you want it to make sense when you're reading it. So and for example, if I'm uh, here, I have a, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't be showing you this. I have a gift card for the liquor store here. Uh, so if I would be selling this card, I would say this is a New Brunswick liquor store gift card, $25 unused or new or whatever. And it could be as simple as that. If, if you would be selling a game, you could write down, I don't know, Grand Theft Auto 4, for the Sony PlayStation 2. And then you can put if there's a manual or not, or if it's complete or not, or et cetera, et cetera. But once you've done it a few times, it's it's all gonna come to you. Like, and, and you're gonna be trying different things and you're gonna, over time, you're gonna see what works better and what doesn't. And, but again, you don't wanna have too many keywords in there because that can confuse the algorithms. And, but at the same time, you wanna have enough that it sends the right people looking for your thing to you. Yeah, I think that's totally right. And again, like eBay gives you, I just looked it up. They give you 80 characters in the title. Yeah. And so when you're looking at this, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'd say most of the time I don't even use all 80 because it's just about making sense. I find it gets busy. It gets, it gets distorted. I can't figure out what, what I'm looking at anymore. Nice and simple, right? And again, like you said with video games, it's the name of the game, the console, and the the feature, right? Whatever, one thing. And that's it. And it doesn't take up 80 letters. You can do it in less. So I'd say you don't have to push for a full... I know we've talked about SEO and things of that nature, but you're not pushing to get every single keyword in there. You can do that in the description through sentences and through things that make sense. But 
not necessarily in the title. I think it's just got to be clear. Yeah, you don't have to. Like, yeah, that's kind of what I was trying to say. You don't have to squeeze it all in. If you don't yeah. need the 80 characters, don't use them. Uh, but they're there if you need them. Like if you need to have that extra information in there, you can. But it doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily uh, necessary. Um, and I just want to say about the title. Well, was there anything else you wanted to say about the title? That's it. <laughs> so, so, so the next part actually uh, is the item specifics. And so what that means is the specifics about your item, like what's the title of the game? What brand is it? What console is it for? Who's the publisher, et cetera, et cetera. They, they have like a hundred different ones. You don't need to fill out all of them. Do not need to fill out all of them and should not fill out all of them. But you need to fill out a few of them that are uh, required. And, you know, if you have the information for a couple more, you can see as you're filling it out, how what's the search volume for each of those. And um, some of them are a few million and some of them are just a few thousand. So the few thousand really aren't worth it. But basically, you want to fill out the name, you know, what the platform is, and maybe one or two things like the language and the whatever. But uh, that's if you're doing it manually, if you're not using their catalog. So eBay has a very extensive catalog of a lot of things that have sold repeatedly and that have had the same item specifics put in, which is why they want you to put the item specifics in. Because if someone else sells it and has a similar picture and has the same language and has the same name, they're going to add it to the catalog. So the catalog is when you put your title in there uh, on the right, you're going to have a button that says something like search or look up or I should know this by heart. But anyways, there's a button you can click and then it's going to pop up another window that essentially you can look through their catalog for your item. And when you find it, you click use this item and it will populate or enter for you all the information that they have for your item. So in some cases, it can save you some time. In some cases, it can give you a headache. But if we're being simple, it can save you time. And it is, it, it's the more complete way of listing. So we don't always use the catalog. But when you have the time, I think you should. Mm. And uh, it's a simple way. Now, they, they, your item's not always going to be on there, depending on what you sell. And I found that when I read out my entire title and I click search, it doesn't always come up. But sometimes if you reduce, like you remove some of those keywords, it will come up. So there's a pro tip mm. for you. If it doesn't pop, populate right away, you can uh, shorten your title and, and then it will search again. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when you're searching to actually just duplicate basically a listing off of one in their catalog, which I think is really interesting. Yes. A and so, I mean, item specifics are a weird one for me. Um, I, I <laughs> fill out, I fill out as many as I can while still being efficient. And I think that one thing that like people will get caught up with, like you say, all the small ones thinking that they had to complete this listing fully. And if you're just doing one, uh, again, you use the catalog, you're oftentimes going through and fixing the ones that aren't correct. That's been my experience, at least with some of them. Um, and then obviously modifying things, because if you're selling a console, you're going to have one with a different hard drive or a different whatever and different, you know, any of that stuff. So I, I've, I do fill out, you know, there's obviously the mandatory item specifics where I do fill out. There's additional ones I like to include as well. But for the most part, I keep it very simple in this section. I'm not going over the top filling out every single item specific I see, mainly because it would take away from the time that I have to list other things, which I think is very valuable. I find that doesn't increase the sell through rate a whole lot. And overall can just take away time from what's really important. But when you're starting out, again, you've got the time. Fill out as much as you can or as much as you know, but don't stress over this section, especially over the small item specifics. So, so here's a few guidelines, I guess. So, I mean, when, when listing a video game and let's say it's not in the list or you don't want to use the catalog, I would fill out the name of, well, the name of the game is mandatory. The platform that it's on is <clears throat> mandatory. Is mandatory, yeah. I think those are the only two mandatory ones. Only two, yep. But... You could, that's where we stop, but you could put the publisher and the genre of the game. And I think those are the two most searched ones. Mm. So those would, would give you the most bang for your buck. Uh, when it comes to cards, like Pokemon cards or uh, hockey cards or whatever, um, 
you have to put whether or not they're graded, and I'm not going to get into that, but you need to put that. And then you also need to write the name of the card. So for example, if it's a Pikachu, you need to write Pikachu. Or if it's, uh, I don't know, uh, a hockey player, Saku Koivu, you need to write the name. But there's a whole other list of things that you can write. Is it a rare? Is it a common? Is it a dark energy? Is it a lightning energy? Is Does he play with the Montreal Canadiens? Or is it for the something, something, something? For Pokemon cards, I would fill out the top three, basically, the name, the character, which is often the same name, you just have to click a box, and also the energy type. And for a hockey card, and again, maybe you guys aren't selling this, but this is just if you are, I would <laughs> fill out the name, uh, the... Again, the, the athlete, which is usually the same thing as the name, and the team. So what team they're on. And that's pretty much all you need to do. Like it, it doesn't, you don't have to fill out the other 30 all around. There's only like an odd person that's gonna search for that. Yeah. As opposed to, well, not that that person's odd. I mean, like very few people will search for those things, as opposed to most people are looking for that specific person or that specific character or that specific game. Well, I know historically when searching on eBay, whether it be buying lots or anything else, the one thing that we do is we specifically look to not fill out any item specifics so we can catch a broader net of all mm -hmm. the items that don't have them filled out. So oftentimes if you're a collector that knows what they're doing on eBay and in this space, they're going to mandate or not mandatory, but they're going to go and they're going to not select item specifics on purpose to see more items that are available. So oftentimes it's not a huge draw. So don't worry too much about the item specifics. And I think you've given yeah. some good examples there as to how you could approach them uh, on a couple different item examples. And you can kind of apply that across the board. There's usually a few mandatory item specifics and a few optional ones that you're going to want to do. And that's about it. I think we can talk now maybe about descriptions. Yeah. So for the description, um, Oh, and, and going back to something you said, this all boils down to like, right now, this is your first listing, you're just learning. Eventually, it'll become about speed versus accuracy, right? So right now, you're just trying to be as accurate as possible, We're not looking too much at how much time it takes. So for the description, I mean, you need to make sure you give a, a reasonable rendition of what the item is, what its flaws are what it's good at, like what its features are, right? So for example, again, I'll, I'll just use this as an example again, my, my liquor store <laughs> gift card. So, I mean, it is in good condition, but it has like some glue on it. It has like, it's obviously got some wear. And I mean, it's not brand new. Like it's been sitting around, thrown around, whatever. And so you need to, when the whole goal is that eBay wants that when the buyer receives the item, that they are not surprised, that they know what they're buying before they buy it, mm -hmm. because they want to avoid returns. They want to avoid, uh, you know, all, all that nastiness. Um, so the, the description, it doesn't have to be long. And that kind of ties into the pictures. So your description, you need to really focus on its flaws, on its features, and it, it ties in with the pictures that you would have taken. Yeah, I think that's totally right. And, um, you know, again, as that broad example goes, my descriptions uh, are not very specific necessarily. Not They're specific. They're not um, long. They don't feature a whole lot of writing. So my description for a PlayStation 3, for example, might be something where I usually like to take the title and bits of it and put that as the first line of the description because, uh, again, a reminder of what you're buying because sometimes there's things in the title that people skip over when they're just clicking on the listing that I want them to know about. Then I'll go down the line. I'll do a little sentence or two about what, what you know, is wrong with the item. You know, this item's in overall good condition, but it has some light cosmetic scratches or has a mark on the left side, has a scratch here. Uh, you know, the disc tray is sticky when it opens, the whatever. I try to make all those things clear. Anything that's obviously not visually uh, available for the buyer from the picture, 
is something that you're going to want to mention in the description as well as any major cosmetic issues or not for the most part for games and consoles they're always going to have some light cosmetic wear and that's kind of assumed so you can get away with not saying that but anything greater than that you're going to want to make sure that you mention and i like to mention the light cosmetic wear as well so the buyers know again exactly what they're getting because that's what the platform ultimately wants us to tell them i also usually include a sentence in my description saying that if you're interested uh and require more photos or if you need uh, you know any more details about this item feel free to send a message i think that sort of opens the door for the buyer um, to reach out to you if they're saying, Man, I really want to buy this, but I just, I wish I could see the back port or whatever it is. I think that sort of opens the door so you have the opportunity to sell to the, to the buyer that needs that as well, instead of them going on looking for the next listing. But that's about as simple as I keep my descriptions. And I think that's about as simple as you probably need to make them. Yeah. So at this point, <laughs> when we make listings, it's like a factory. So we have like, when, when, when we're listing it, we have... So by the time you get to the description, you already have your title. So we copy paste the title. So the, the, the title is basically the main part of the description, because if your title is good, I mean, it, it already explains what it is. And then in the condition description, we mm. pretty much say something along the lines of in overall good condition with some wear or some cosmetic scratches or this or that, kind of like what you said. Um, but if there's moderate scratching on the disc or you know like any may like important flaw that think about if you're buying something and you get it what would like would you have liked to know that that was there if so make sure it's in your description any scratches any rips any water damage any dirtiness like to some degree right like if it's anything noticeable make sure that it, it's in there because it uh not not everyone is a careful reader <laughs> <laughs> and uh so you need to protect yourself as well by by writing out things and making sure you take good pictures and that makes it so that you don't have to deal with as much um returns when everything is well described or most things are well described. Mm. And so it, it saves you time and it saves fees and, and, and just all that you know, <laughs> with the feedback system. Um, so having good descriptions and all that, it does help you get better feedback in the long run, have good, you know, uh, transactions happen more often and all that good stuff. Yeah. Especially as a new seller when you're trying to, yes. you know, you're going to run into more people that are maybe trying to take advantage of you on the platform because you have no feedback. Yeah, It is just what it is. And you need to protect yourself against that. And good pictures and good descriptions will oftentimes deter people uh, that might try to, uh, to take advantage of a listing or whatever, um, because they notice that you seem like you know what you're doing, but also they know that you're well protected and on the eBay side because eBay can analyze this listing and, and say that you did the right thing and that everything looks to par. So that's an important thing. I really love what you said about putting yourself in the buyer's shoe. I think that's something that can be applied overall here for the entire listing process. If you were the buyer, would you feel comfortable with those pictures and comfortable purchasing something using those pictures? Would you feel comfortable uh, you know, reading that title? Does it make sense to you? Can you understand that description? Has it described everything that you might want to know if you're purchasing the item? And as we get into price here as well, if that was a shirt that you were buying or if that was a whatever, is that a price that you think you would feel comfortable paying in the market that is you know, in front of you? Would you buy this? Would I Would you buy, buy it? And actually, when you were talking about that, it made me think about an eBay store. Someone who sent us a message. Um, it's another local seller who has an eBay store here. And he just has the weirdest name. And I'm not going to say what it is. But when you choose a username for your eBay store, <laughs> don't call it like something raunchy or something weird. Like, I don't know, choose a name that's a, at, at the very least is neutral, right? <laughs> and just so you know, you can change the username. I think it's once a month or something like yeah. that. Yeah, You can change it. Um, like we changed it from whatever it was. Uh, we had just like a generic name on it a year ago and we changed it. I think it was the Silver Fox or something like that. I don't even know why. <laughs> I mean, whatever. <laughs> but so we changed it to Resale Heroes. And so... Because, I mean, would you buy from someone whose name is, 
Bob's Fish Market. <laughs> I don't know what. It's true. Right? It's true, though. Why it's would true. I buy this music CD from Bob's Fish Market? What kind of these, crap is that? These are all little things that we don't realize as sellers, but yeah. they're deterrents to the buyers. And you just walk right past them as if, you know, like it's it's maybe harder to notice them if you're used to it or whatever. Or you think it's funny because it's a name that your friends called you, but it's like, guys, you're trying to sell stuff here, right? It's like, don't come up to my door and try to sell me something with that name. So definitely don't do it, you know, <laughs> on the internet. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think that's that pretty much uh, wraps up the description. Mm-hmm. Um, so pricing, this is a good one. Pricing. I love pricing. So pricing. Now I'm. We are kind of assuming here that the stuff that you have, you've already looked up the price and what you bought, you already should kind of have an idea. But let's say that you don't. Right, so there's there's a few ways to look up pricing uh, on eBay. You can either look through what is currently for sale in that wheelhouse of what you're trying to sell. You can look at what recently sold, and some people use price charting, which is another website that kind of compares pricing. So what I suggest that you do. So well, I guess I'll just say how we do it. Usually, let's hear it. <laughs> uh, so I sort by the lowest price, including shipping. So basically uh, top to bottom, the lowest price. So that shows me who's the most competitive right now. Mm. That's the price that is to beat, theoretically, if you're trying to be the lowest price. We don't always price it to be the lowest, but we price it to be close to that so that we're not going to sell first, but eventually ours is going to sell because we're just a few steps down. You get in line. Yeah. And we also sort. So, so again, when you go in the search bar on eBay, so let's just say you search for, I don't know, I'm just going to say Grand Theft Auto again, Grand Theft Auto, PlayStation 3 video game. So it's going to populate whatever it's going to populate as, as, as results. And on the left, you have like 40 filters. So filter by buy it now filter, which I actually, that, that's another thing we need to talk about filter by <laughs> buy it now filter by North America. Because that's really yeah, region well, specific. I mean, depending right? on your region, we're assuming pe- most people are in North America here. So I, I would, I would, I, um, even though I'm in Canada, I also try to compete with the Americans. <laughs> <laughs> and and then you just look at what comes up, and that gives you an idea. Assuming you have good keywords, it it, it is going to compare when someone searches for what you typed. This is what comes up. So mm. that gives you an idea of what it's worth or what people think it's worth. And then when you click on sort uh, by sold listings, which is another option, it's going to show you what sold in the past six months or whatever, and it's going to show you all the prices. So it'll also show you, is it actually selling? Because maybe they're trying to sell it for $25, but they've only ever sold for 15 So maybe you shouldn't price it at 25 so when you're starting out, it's probably good to do both. But usually we do one or the other. I probably, uh, I, I know a lot of people advocate for looking at what's sold. I think we look more at what is currently selling, but it's just different. That's really interesting because, yeah, there's a certain aspect of trying to be competitive and beat the market or at least be in line to beat the market when you have an item that you're listing. I think we look more at solds. We like to see what the average selling price is and uh, yep. and what's sold recently. So in the last maybe month or so for that item. And we price based off that. But I think there's a good thing to be said, especially when you have the time to go in and see what's actually on the market. And what are you trying to beat here? Like what that's your competition. That's who's live right now. And there's always somebody that can come in the day after you as well and price yeah. lower. So again, if there are things selling for 15, everybody's listed for 30. Why do you think they're still listed? And why do you think the things that have sold for 15 sold? There's some reason behind that too. So you can get a lot more of a sort of idea of what's happening in the market when you look at the sold versus what's available. I think that can give you a really good idea where to place your item on the price scale. And with regards to some things, I mean, we've purchased items, you know, like shoes in the past where we'll look them up and there's like none active. It's like, what, does this thing not exist? And then you flip over to the sold side and look at that. There's 20 sold. Yeah. It's like, well, that's the kind of exciting items. And vice versa works as well, where you'll look up a, a remote and it's a $50 controller and look, there's 20 listings, but you flip over the solds and there's no solds. So I think having both perspectives, and I think we look at that more when we're sourcing than when we're listing, but having both perspectives is really important for pricing out your items. Yeah. So, and again, 
hopefully you will have done your due diligence before you even buy the thing. But when you're listing is when that's when you really need to price it properly. And I'm going to, we're just going to talk very briefly about there's two different kinds of auctions on eBay, really. There's the buy it now or the auction auction, like the live auction where people actually bid. So the live auction is you put a starting price, so let's say 99 cents, and then people bid and bid and bid and bid. Or we hope, you hope they <laughs> bid. That's the and goal. Whoever has the highest bid buys the item in the end. So in our experience, those, we haven't really had good success with those. So we practically always use the other option, which is the buy it now option. So the buy it now option is that you put a specific price that you're looking for, but you've already researched what it should sell for, what you want for, and you basically put that price. And if someone wants it for that price, they can get it for exactly that price. And they just need to click a button and it's theirs. So it's different, right? Uh, so that's what I would recommend that most new sellers start with so that you don't get as many surprises. Because I mean, don't get me wrong. There, there's some auctions that could take off and hit a home run and you can make three times as much profit as you thought. But the opposite could happen as well. Like we sold an item that was worth $50 that there was only a bid for like five. Interestingly enough, the guy ended up not paying. So we were able to cancel. Ah, you're that. all good. But whatever, we would have been forced to send it to him at a loss if... Yeah, I'll, I'll let you take up from there. Yeah, like I think it's a really valuable point. Uh, I mean, the basics of them are in the name, the buy it now and the auction. And I think you made a good point around that. When you're a new seller, though, I will say this. It's hard enough to sell something as it is with zero feedback. It's going to be, you know, it's going to take time. And you're going to have to get just the right buyer. And you're going to make sure your listings are high enough quality. So all these things that you hear online that we're talking about, sell through rate and all this stuff, nothing applies when you have no feedback. <laughs> nobody even knows you yet. So nobody can trust you or any of this stuff, right? And yes, eBay's got the money back guarantee. And that's why you will be able to get your first sale eventually. But it's going to take longer than, you know, because somebody's buying an item from you for 60 versus me for 60. And I've got 800 pieces of feedback and you've got none. They're going to buy it from me first. So that's one reason to discount your item going back to the pricing model. But what I mainly want to suggest here is if you're starting out, maybe don't do an auction because as a zero feedback person, that's going to discourage, like, you know, discourage bidding that much more. It's going to be hard enough to sell as a buy it now. You're definitely not going to get full price as an auction unless you have some crazy out there item. So for the most part, I'm going to guess that you don't have some crazy out there item and that you're going to start with a nice buy it now, probably priced competitively under market, so you could sell your first few items. Again, this is not the time to rake in as much profit as possible. This is the time to sell as many items as you can off the bat. So then you can start to learn the process. And even if it means selling them for a loss or under market value, so you can get those first few pieces of feedback and all that, I think it all comes down to pricing and the buy it now strategy, which is why they're also intertwined and important. Yeah. And you're building up your reputation too, right? So this whole mm -hmm. thing about the feedback is basically when someone buys from you, they can leave you a good feedback or a neutral feedback or a negative feedback. So you want all or almost all of that to be good because that all plays into how much traffic that the website sends you, et cetera, et cetera. But so you need to do everything that you can for the person to have a good experience so that the store continues, your store continues to do well. Absolutely. And I just want to say as well, when you're using buy it now, the buy it now type. So basically when you a fixed price, I think it's called, a, it's called, it's called a fixed price option. Um, you can also add a, best offer option, which basically mm. gives people the option to send you offers on it. So you can, as long as you know what your minimum is, just make sure that you don't accept like terrible offers, but it does uh, increase visibility. eBay likes that. People like to send offers, like it will generate more interest. Uh, you're probably not going to get full price for it, but it's more likely to sell with the best offer option. Mm, yeah, I agree. And the offer option is a, a really important one, I think, for ranking and for beginner sellers to be able to have that option to sell at a lower price. Like you say, it does discourage people buying at full price because they have the option to make an offer. So why pay full price? But I think if you're trying to be competitive, that's a good place to start. There are actually a lot of people, I don't know why, there's a lot of people that buy uh, full price. Um, it's it's weird on an but, offer, right? But I mean, if your price is already good, 
whatever, right? Um, They're afraid somebody else might snatch it, right? It's a live marketplace, yep. I guess. And if they want it, they can have it now without waiting 24 hours or 12 hours or whatever for a response or potentially no response or whatever. Like, exactly. So I think, you know, you'll still get a couple sales at full price, but it's a, it's a good feature to have. So that's most of what we talk, what we wanted to talk about, but I have two questions here that uh, were asked in the past few weeks from our viewers. And I, partially answered one of them before but one of the the question was well so the first question was tell us more about the listing process so I mean, we talked about all of that yeah the second part to that question is how can you list faster so i kind of left some tidbits in there but just to recap and again this is more like advanced stuff don't start there but once you have a few like maybe 100 listings or more listings under your belt you can start kind of cutting corners when it comes to you, your time, like you can be more efficient with your time. Uh, so there's leeway to how many pictures you take, how much time you spend on your titles and your descriptions. At that point, you're already going to kind of have templates, like the same kind of things that you're using over and over again. You can use an option that's called sell similar. So if you're selling a lot of the same stuff, you can basically copy the a listing that you've already made and just edit things in it with new pictures and the new description of your item but it'll save a lot of the stuff that would be similar um and i mean i think that's that's some of the main um yeah and and and, and once you're used to it you can take all your pictures back to back to back to back to back so that you don't do one thing and then another thing and then another thing and then go back to the pictures and then another thing and then another thing. So yeah, those, those are a few ways that you can save a little bit of time. on this. A, a, a lot of increasing the time. And again, this isn't so much for this episode and we'll have a whole nother discussion about this, but a lot of saving time comes down to batching what you're doing, batching all your testing, yes. batching all your sticker removal, batching all your whatever, and uh, doing that for your photos, your listings, and that helps increase the time. Also, a lot of my time has been saved beforehand. For example, if there is a sticker on, I am eliminating that sort of thing or cleaning an item. So you don't have to describe it as dirty, cleaning off a sticker. So you don't have to describe the sticker being there. Also putting all the items for video games, for example, with the manual together, all the ones without the manual. So I'm not going back and changing my titles and descriptions as I go. And I can list in that order to save time as well as like you say, I love having templates and I like to not think about stuff when I'm doing it, especially if it's all the same items. So I like to have all that stuff already laid out, but I think that basically covers some quick ways you could do that or speed up your listings. And we'll get into more of that in the future. Yeah. And our next question is, should I get an eBay store and is it worth it? And I think we're going to wrap up with that question. We're both going to say no, I think. <laughs> yeah, is that right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, short version for a new seller, don't, don't get a store. Like there's, um, so why would you want to get a store? So essentially you can pay a monthly fee, whatever the fee is to get certain benefits, which basically is that you get a certain amount every month of listings that they don't charge you a fee on, uh, an insertion fee, basically, like a listing fee. And there's certain other benefits. I mean, it doesn't really, we don't need to get into like the, the nitty gritty of it, but when you're first starting out, I wouldn't. I would only get um, a store when you have so many listings or you're selling so much that you don't have any more free listings available. But if you grow uh, incrementally, like slowly or steadily, usually eBay is going to increase your limits for free and mm. they'll give you free coupons and they're going to, you know, they're pretty good with that. And maybe you're not going to need to do that for a while. So don't, don't rush into spending a bunch of money or, or, or subscribing to things or buying software or like just start. And uh, so I would say don't get it right away. But when you have a few hundred listings and you're selling things and you're seeing that your fees are going up and that it, it could save you money, that's when it makes sense to start getting a store. Yeah, I think so. And for anybody wondering, there are other features that come with the eBay store alongside those additional listings that you get historically the vacation mode feature which they finally have figured out for normal sellers i couldn't believe that they didn't have that option for for regular sellers and some other things with promotions and being able to categorize your store and be able to i don't know is that you get shipping coupon and a bunch of, but it's not stuff that you need as a beginner by any means so definitely you don't need to start there 
Yeah, if you get it from day one, you wouldn't even know where to start. Like it's no, so, you wouldn't know how to use anything. It's not that it's complicated. It's just that it's such a flood of information that you wouldn't even use it because there, it would be too much. So right now, focus on getting stuff for cheap, selling it for profit, and doing that over and over. And every week, listen to a couple videos, learn a couple things, get a little better. And that's what we're all about. Absolutely. <laughs> so I think that concludes pretty much everything we wanted to talk about today. So I think so. Yeah. So I'm super excited about everything that we said. And I think there's been a lot of value in this video and a lot of tips for anybody that's just starting out. And again, for anybody that's maybe a little bit more experienced, we've got plenty of videos coming for you guys as well in the future, but we figured we'd sort of start our way here, bring everybody along for the ride and make sure that everybody's sort of on board. And I think I'm really excited to get into some more stuff as we keep going. Yeah. So thank you guys for asking us your questions like I asked last time. So drop us your questions in the comments. We're going to answer them as we do the videos and uh, like assuming it fits with the episode, but we will get to them it, it, because our goal is to help you, you know, like I said, do better on eBay and we're sharing our experience with you and, and our knowledge with you. And uh, because this is a community where we're, we're giving back and it's all about the building and it's really interesting to do the interactions because everybody's got different questions everybody's at a different place they're selling different stuff so let us know what you found was most helpful and let us know if you have a question for us for the next few episodes and make awesome. sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time we'll see you guys next time